building itself was designed in the 1950s, but it wasn't completed until the early 1970s. So the actual design, uh, I think, has really become uh, very influential over the development of Sydney during, uh, during that period and after. People are able to engage with it. You can see we're walking up these steps, uh, you know, this building and the piazza in front of it are used for concerts, people just sit here, um, gather and chat. Yeah, I, I think one of, the, uh, one of the things about this building to me is that this building actually really does have a soul. Um, the building is Sydney. Sydney is this building. Um, I think it actually captures how people in Sydney want to think about themselves as well. You could have built this today. I think it would have the same, um, you know, the same power. It, whether you could build it today or not is another question. Uh, it was a very long and fraught process. It took over uh, over 25 years to actually get this building constructed, and I don't think that we would tolerate that today. However, um, no one would ever say we want to get rid of this building and replace it. This is the material that was cut away and used to actually build many of the buildings within the city itself. Um, they're a little bit further back into the CBD, but, um, but the, especially the early government buildings were all built of stone um, and of that stone in a very European style. So even, even in the 1970s um, with the, with the hotel, High Rise Hotel building, all the way through to the, uh, the glass, the EY building that's in front of us, um, which has the, uh, the timber shutters, there's a very conscious effort to actually um, to incorporate that sort of coloration and make the building feel much more a part of, um, of a Sydney signature. The city act actually uh, does lack a lot, of, um, a lot of main public open space. It doesn't have, uh, like a lot of European cities, it doesn't actually have really one significant square. But this circular key really does fill that, um, fill that void even though you can't stand in the middle of it, uh, it's something that both visitors come and see, but also locals actually really do feel that they are uh, able to come in and use the space. Part of Sydney really is um, pretty much a picture of, um, of the history of the city. Behind us you've got the uh, government buildings which are from the 19th century but actually underneath us you actually have buildings going back to or foundations of buildings going back to the 18th century and across there we have some of the oldest uh, some of the oldest buildings terrace houses uh, um, still existing within the city itself. So this was actually quite a significant site, zoned by the state government, who actually developed this office tower up above us, uh, mainly, for, uh, mainly for their own government use. It is, uh, it is also leased out uh, to private companies. But the significance of the site was such that they actually established the Museum of the City of Sydney here and, uh, and preserved many of the artefacts actually underneath us as well. Here we've got some of the um, some of the newest office buildings and large-scale office buildings in Sydney, and in some ways, uh, you know, I think that they actually epitomise um, the desire to actually bring the Australian or Sydney kind of lifestyle um, actually right into people's working environment. This is a, a recent building by Richard Rogers, and you can see some of the things that probably would have been considered mistakes in other places, but actually just seem to work in Sydney because of our, our climate. The people in Sydney and probably all over Australia are actually very proud of is Australian coffee. So being able to get outside, have a good cup of coffee, um, you know, have a chat, have a break, absolutely critical now in our, <laughs> absolutely critical in our society.
building's called Australia Square, which is a bit ironic considering it's actually round. But uh, this was designed by uh, Harry Seidler, a very prominent architect in Sydney. Uh, the structure was done by um, Piero Luigi Nervi. Uh, you can see the lotus flower type pattern, um, which is actually the, the pattern of the structure of every single um, office floor. standing right now was actually um, part of the old working harbour of Sydney back when you know ships would come up and, and load and unload. You can see some of the uh, some of the older uh, wharf buildings that are that remain, the finger wharf buildings. Um, they've been converted into apartments um, further around uh, some of them have been converted into uh, you know, theatre, dance, uh, Sydney Dance Company, Sydney Theatre Company, other sort of cultural things as well. But you could actually say that, that this part of Sydney is, uh, at the moment, how the city wants to see itself um, through development. As we walk further along in this direction, you can actually see um, one of the most significant buildings in Sydney under construction. Uh, this is actually the Crown Casino building. Very controversially, uh, the, the uh, casino is being built there. It was originally earmarked for another significant cultural building. We still don't know whether uh, whether something will actually end up being built out there, but at this stage the significant cultural building is actually the casino, which unfortunately um, is, a, is essentially a private building. Um, not many people in Sydney will really engage in the building the same way that they do with the, um, with the Opera House. <laughs> 